Welcome to the Donnie B Show on the MAGA Locally platform. Today we have a special guest, Senator Jill Carter. Welcome, I, Senator. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I have a few questions today. I know you got a lot going on, so I'll keep it short. Um, I know uh, this was a busy week for politics. We had Super Tuesday. We had the, the Republican caucuses in each county. Uh, can you give us a little indication of how that went uh, from your perspective? Sure. No. No, I'd love to. So I attended the one um, in Newton County. There was about 335 people there as delegates. Um, it was, I thought the turnout was really great considering it was, it was difficult to try to let people know what was going on. I, you know that they would want to attend if they knew. So just trying to get the information out there to, because this, again, this was a year that was different than any other that they'd ever attended, you know, as far as caucuses, because the presidential preference primary usually is is done differently through the ballot so right. so this was put it a little bit different but yeah we had a great turnout um it went well and and i think that trump won the day you know in missouri handedly <laughs> though i think maga i think maga swept the country right yeah i think so and i i'm excited to see what um is on the horizon you know a year ago if you would have said maga or even two years ago you know, some of the old guard Republicans would have kind of, you know, lowered their eyebrow at you and with a little bit of disdain or whatnot. But it, it's it's really interesting because I talk to people all over the country and the ones that were not MAGA are now another lukewarm version of the MAGA. Right. So I, I've seen a big change. The pendulum starting to swing and there's just a lot of momentum uh, heading that direction. So it's looking pretty good for the for the MAGA community. Yeah, there's a tendency sometimes to just lick your finger and put it in the air um, to kind of see where the pulse is. You don't want to be caught um, standing necessarily the wrong person. That happens a lot in politics, doesn't it? So <laughs> That's um, absolutely right. So that's no surprise. But uh, I right. thought it was a great day. Super Tuesday went really well. I think there were 16 states, 15 to 16. I think there was 15 states, actually, that were involved in Super Tuesday, and he swept all of them. So I think I, I'm feeling good is about the day. It was a pretty good day. You know, I think you're inspiring um, a lot of non-politicians uh, to run for office. I interviewed, I had interview Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, running for Missouri State Representative 161 and 163. So Kathy Joe Loy and Thomas Ross. Um, and I got on and I was asking him, I said, you know, Senator Carter's kind of a trailblazer. She She wasn't part of that good old boy system. Uh, she was just an everyday person that uh, wanted to do the right thing. She had been, you know, frustrated with maybe the politics or the way some things were going and just decided to get involved and, and change that. And they, they both were, you know, they both came out and said, uh, you're very inspirational and they're giving you high kudos for your performance. And they were very respectful for that. No, I, you know, it is, it is. I'm not somebody who sometimes I'm too transparent. I, I wonder, you know, if I am too transparent, but um, just simply because it sometimes um, can kind of bite you, you know, if you are too transparent, but right. I always feel like it's, it's where I want to go. It's where I want to be. I ran for more transparency. So in saying that it's difficult to be somebody in the building or even at home who doesn't play the political games. You're, you're not the favorite. You're the stepchild. And, um, and sometimes that can kind of wear on you a little bit simply because, you, especially when your intentions are good, but you know, I'm not there for them. And right. I just, I focus what, on my. What would be one something of advice you'd, you'd give people that are wanting to run that's never been in politics before, uh, such as yourself, what would you tell them? Would you tell them to go for it? Or is there, any, is there anything that you would do different uh, starting from the very beginning? Um, it's easier to say after you've been here, you know, maybe in a few <laughs> years you could ask that question. We'll see if it's changed. But um, right. no, again, I, we were in a really difficult place as a country. I mean, we still are, but we were right in the middle of COVID when all of that was going on. People were kind of locked in their houses. We had no idea what was going on. And for somebody who had 
again, been up here for over a decade trying to fight to try to roll back the scales of the bureaucracy and how difficult it was. Um, and then to see how our churches were kind of being left, you know, boarded up, so to speak, and didn't right. have access. People weren't sure they could even open their business. So it was a really difficult time for, for us as a state and as a community. And, you know, the, having that bill hit the floor that would have given immunity to to hospitals and nursing homes and manufacturers of vaccinations and know that the small coffee shop or the mom and pop down the road could have been charged with a, a felony for not obeying the Department of Health, right? Where they had carte blanche yep. discretion to promulgate any rule that they wanted to and you had to obey it. Um, that's where that's that's what compelled me to come back here to the Capitol again and to talk to those that were in office at the time to say, what, what are we doing? And, and the, the small ask after all of it, the hell Mary after receiving some pushback was, well, can we at least get the immunity for the churches? Can churches have the same immunity that you're willing to give, you know, these other people. And when that was a no, it's okay. Nobody, it's time <laughs> for the scales to fall off people's eyes and realize that right. times, and it's not about personality at all. I would go to dinner with any of them, right? Right. But there's, we've got to mentally determine in our minds that just because somebody is a nice person and we want to we have dinner with them does not make them somebody who's necessary advocating for us or willing to do hard things, you know, to make sure that, that, that we're taken care of as a country. So... So yeah, so I would definitely, uh, man, it's a it's a road to hoe if you <laughs> want to do it, and you're not one of the good old boys. Um, it's a lonely place to be if you're not one of the good old boys, and it is and it's and it's a broke place to be because you're not getting money from the big lobbyist who's you know into the pocket. So you're relying on the five dollar contributions, the ten dollar contributions, just to you know try to, to maintain your campa campaign and campaigning is very expensive. You know, I talked to one of them, they said, yeah, they were given a number of $30,000 just to put signs out and they couldn't believe how expensive it was just to try to campaign. So it's hard right. to compete against the good old boys system. That's well-oiled, well-machined and well-funded. Right. No. And, and this is, this is kind of what has brought us to where like everybody finds fault with, you know, the money and all of that, but right. You know, we have two choices as a society and a culture, a political culture that we've created. So do you go to the people and try to have those relationships with them so that at least they know who you are and that you're sincere, or do you skip all of that work? Right. And just <laughs> play Kate go to, to the lobbyist, go straight yeah. to the lobbyist and open up the pocket, tell them to open up the, the kitty. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think the way you're doing, it, it's the way I think the people want it to happen. So, you know, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. I think you guys had a pretty busy week there at at the state, at the Capitol building. So can you fill us in on maybe, I think you maybe had a couple of bills that went through committee or went out of committee or kind of give us an update yeah, on sure. what you got going on. I appreciate that. So our MSSU bill, that was exact. Um, so that's, that's good. Uh, our Missouri Southern bill that expands the, allows the school to expand their mission statement. Um, we're, we are in conversation now about the timing of that hitting the floor. So followed up a little bit today on that. Um, we had a bill that would um, be basically we call it keep your ground law for gun owners to make it to where if you're found not guilty um, in a civil case or a criminal case for defending yourself that you can't be charged or have somebody basically file a lawsuit civilly against you. Um, yeah, because I've seen that a lot. People that were criminally uh, cleared of all wrongdoing are sued by the family members and then wind up paying quite a bit civilly. So, you know, right. that's really kind of an injustice. If they found you not liable from a criminal uh, case, then you shouldn't be held liable civilly either. So that's a good bill that you got going. I believe if people want to follow that, it's SB 989. Is that correct? I think that's what yep. it is. Yeah. Okay. So that was exact on... Um, Honestly, we kind of, I've been getting a lot of calls from the Kansas City Star on that bill, but <laughs> um, but that one we were able to kind of stealthily get in there, get out without 
you know, much testimony or anything. We just kept it low key. And honestly, this is just a protection of people's assets. If they've been found, Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, to be um, innocent of any wrongdoing, they shouldn't have to be spend their life savings trying to defend themselves in civil court. So I thought it was a great bill. And that one, um, like I said, was exact on this week. We also have a bill that's coming up that would help farmers. That was, is supposed to be exact on also. That's our ATV bill. It just puts ATVs in the classification of a, um, a UTV so that for farmers, so that they don't have to pay sales tax and register that. So it's a little thing for farmers, but anything we can do to help the farmers, you know, to be able to, to keep the costs down, um, we like to do that. So that one was heard and exact on. So we were excited about that. And then this week we have a really good bill. Um, it's a great bill, SJR 76, that will, it requires work for those who want to participate in state benefits. So for those okay. who are able. Right. So, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of apathy when it comes to people not wanting to go back to work, especially coming off of those COVID dollars. So this was, if you're able, if you are disabled, obviously that's a different story. That doesn't put you in this classification, but we need people not, you know, profiting off the benefit and the work of other citizens that are, are working. So that Absolutely. bill is supposed to be. And then we have um, our reinstatement of the presidential preference primary. That's going to be heard Monday in committee. So we're excited about that one. Um, so yeah, things are kind of starting to truck along a little bit. Uh, just excited about the work that we're able to do. We had a group today. Today was a really big day. In my mind, we had, we worked with interfaith work groups and organizations and work with the governor's office. So to create today is the Missouri Religious Liberty Day in Missouri. So today was that celebration of that event. So every year now that'll be the, you know, today's special day. Religious Liberty Day. So we had, I emceed that event in the rotunda and the governor spoke and it was just a really great event. So that sounds like a good event. Kind of the cherry on the top for, uh, for the week. <laughs> awesome. So does that pretty much wrap up what happened this week and what's coming in? What, is there anything that was, that happened on the floor this week that was, uh, controversial or that you're glad didn't get passed or is there anything or is it pretty calm this week? Well, we're still talking about education. So that was supposed to come up this week, but it's supposed to actually come up Tuesday or Wednesday, kind of unannounced. They were going to put it on the calendar, but um, that didn't come up this week. So we're going to continue that fight, I think, next week. Um, Again, my first responsibility is to represent my district and to know that the superintendents would love to get rid, roll back the policies and then administrative oversight that has shackled our schools and created an atmosphere where it's very difficult for parents and board members and teachers to be able to teach um, to students. We're, I'm all in um, when it comes to that. So, yeah, We're I think gonna... people are recognizing that the government has taken uh, way too much control in our children's education, and they're limiting the parents' uh, ability to have input into that. So I think you know, people are ready for a change. Um, I'm very excited to that, have that conversation. So. so that should happen yeah, in the awesome. beginning of the week. And I don't know if people know this. It might be a little something to add, but... Joplin schools passed a resolution unanimously with their school board with legislative priorities, basically speaking to the legislation that we have that will give them the flexibility to act like a, a neighborhood school again. Oh, wow. So very excited about that. Spoke with some other board members this week from other districts. Um, we had the superintendents up from Nixa, Sarcoxy, Web City, um, several of them, even some board members, East Newton, a board member from East Newton. So we're just continuing to have this dialogue about what we can do to help our schools return back to neighborhood schools that they deserve to, to be known for. So very excited right. about the work. Well, Senator, I know you're busy. That sounds like quite a bit right there. It sounds like you've been uh, earning your pay uh, <laughs> out there, but I know you have an event coming up March 15th, the night yes. for the people. 
and you got a couple of great speakers that are coming in. Um, yeah. You want to talk about that just for a second before we close? Sure. So everyone's invited. This is, we're going to keep this. Politics is, seems, at least for me, it seems like the atmosphere out there is it's sometimes very heavy. And we just want people to feel good about being an American again. I remember Ronald Reagan was the first, I was a kid, but I remember <laughs> right. how feel about who I was. And though we are not perfect, we have been so blessed and gifted this great country that we have. And I think they've tried to erode that heritage away and take that that away from us, that pride. And um, and so we're just trying to restore, you know, a little bit of that in our own way and in our own community. So we've got Elijah O'Neill from from American Experience Museum. He's coming. That's an arm of the blaze with Glenn Beck. So we're very excited. If you've never heard him speak, he was just phenomenal. I have. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I've told everybody, yeah. I'm like, you got to listen to this guy. <laughs> he is so awesome. And then another force to be reckoned with is Aaron Dorr with Missouri Firearms Coalition. Um, great speaker. Just makes you feel good about, again, taking a stand for the things that we need to take a stand for and who we are as Americans. And, and we'll have also Citizens Awards and a dinner. So it's just going to be a really nice, low-key, community-based event. And it's event. all free. So the yep, dinner's nice. free. We have, a, we have a local restaurant that's sponsoring it. Um, yes. Can't think of it off the top of my name. The Union Station, I believe, is the yeah. name of it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Union. And I know Razor's Edge, the, the gun shop here, Brandon Kelly. And uh, he's going he's gonna to be on site. And I know there's some other folks, but next time to be raffled off. So we're yeah, excited about yeah. Um, So it, like I said, it is just, we're the citizens awards, a nice meal. Just please come and just, just enjoy each other's company, you know? And that's, often... that's March 15th on a Friday. It's the doors open at five 30 starts at six o'clock and it's the Joplin worship center on Joplin East seventh street. Worship. Yes. So just, and you need the RSVP. <laughs> Because I, I think there's 114 people signed up as of now. I talked to Reggie today. Awesome. Trying to get an update. Okay. Yep. So there's okay. still plenty of seats, but they need Reggie, the RSVP. <laughs> right. Reg, it just helps us with the dinner, with the food. Yeah. So Reggie at JillForSenate.com. Yeah. And it's well, casual. Come as you are. Just have yep. come ready to have some fun and get to meet some fellow Americans, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Senator Carter, thank you for your time. Uh, safe travels driving back in, back home today. So, Sure, appreciate it, Donnie. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Senator. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.